here and it is the end of February or at least close to it by the time you see this video it will be and so it is time for me to do an update to my reading challenge and <laughs> I have a lot of stuff to go over so I'm just gonna jump right in. What I'm faced with and if you saw my last update for my reading challenge um, I, I don't know what's happened but I've been reading a lot of short fiction and especially this month, I started reading a bunch of children's books. I don't know what happened, but like I got some really good deals on some stuff. And so I read some children's books. So it really seems like I am flying through my reading challenge when um, I'm not really, but I guess I am because I guess it counts a book. If it counted like, you know, pages, I probably wouldn't be nearly as far along as I am. But regardless, so let's. For the month of February, I read I read eight books. Now that's actual publication. That doesn't mean that everything that I all of those books were like novel length books, but that's what I, I read eight publications. Of those eight publications, um, two of them were on my original list of the you know the thirty books that I wanted to try to read this year. And clearly, I'm going to read way more than thirty books this year. I'm going to have to figure out a way to adjust my challenge for next year because I've already adjusted it once I'm not messing with it again. It's just going to look like I'm doing extremely well. As of right now, my um, Goodreads little monitor is telling me that I'm, you know, like 20% ahead on my thing. Like, it's ridiculous. Anyway, so, so let's see. In the month of February, like I said, I just read eight books. Two of those were from the original challenge. And so I guess now we're just going to kind of go through and see what I read. <clears throat> the first thing that I have on a list, they're not in any particular order. It's just how it is on here. I am continuing to read my daily devotional, Cling to God. So that's going to be on the list for a while. Um, also, last month I mentioned a, um, I believe I mentioned the graphic novel anthology that I couldn't really talk about yet. But they are hosting the Kickstarter for it right now, and I'll try to include a link for it. And it's actually called Monsters and Other Scary Shit. I'm not going to say that word, but that's the title of the book. And it's a really good monster anthology. It's not a horror anthology. It's a monster anthology. And it's a graphic novel. And so I'm just waiting to get my copy. I got to read an advanced digital arc, and I'm ready to review it whenever I'm able to do so. And um, I'll talk more about that later. But for the books that I actually read this month in February, I read a children's book called Duck and Hippo in a Rainstorm. And I like this book. I do feel like it kind of went off point a little bit. I was expecting it to be mostly about, you know, Duck and Hippo's adventure during the rainstorm, which most of it is. But then right at the end, it kind of goes off a little bit. I don't know, but regardless, it's a very cute story. The illustrations are amazing. So I believe I've already rated it, but I haven't actually posted my review yet. And I'm pretty sure I gave that one a four star. And I'll try to update the review sometime soon. Whether or not the ratings that I'm telling you are correct, um, when I go back to edit the video, the correct rating will be down here somewhere. So the next thing that I read was Girl Waits with Gun. And this was a historical fiction book. This was actually a book that I got to pick this time around for the book club that I'm, I've mentioned that I was a part of in, at my job. Um, last month we read Gemini, which I gave a three. This month we read Girl Waits with Gun. And I'm pretty sure I gave it a five because I really enjoyed this book. It's, um, it's based on the real life true story of one of the first female deputy sheriffs in the country. But, you know, it is historical fiction, so I'm sure some of it's fictionalized and things are exaggerated. You know, authors have to take that creative liberty to make these stories interesting. But regardless, you know, the headlines that appear in the story, they're real headlines. You know, this did really happen, but it's this a fictional story. And um, I've been telling people that the, the story itself, it starts out kind of like, you know, something happens right away that kind of sets up the whole story. And then it slows down, not in a bad way. It, it's not a fast-paced book um, once you really get into it, but everything is happening for a reason. It's not just miscellaneous details that are just filling up pages. It's moving slow because it's setting the tone for what eventually, you know, comes about. But I feel like the whole book is about uh, ultimately change. People 
have these set ideas about what the world is and how it should be. And sometimes things happen and you have to change. And a lot of that um, can seem like it's bad at first, but in the long run, you have to either give in to change or give up. And fortunately in this book, the change is part of women's empowerment. So I, I liked the book. And if you want to check out my review, um, there will be a link below. The next thing I read, was Dragon of the Stars. And this is a standalone space opera from Alex J. Kavanaugh, and I love his work. I've read his entire series, except for the last um, thing that he did, which was a prequel, which I actually did read, it's coming up next. But anyway, Dragon of the Stars blew me away. I'm just gonna say that right now. I gave it a five. I don't even need to think about it. I know I gave it a five. It it's not that the story itself was just so action-packed that it, you know, kept me on the edge of my seat, although it was a really good story, very well written and everything, but it was the concept behind, you know, this, what it, what it, what does it really mean to be a leader? All, all people are all the time, they want to be, you know, the president of the United States or they want to be the CEO of the company, but Really and truly, being a leader isn't this big status symbol that most people think it is. Most of the time, being a leader is about serving others, and it's it's kind of a very sacrificial um, position to be in a lot of times. And I think a lot of people take for granted that if you're a leader that you just haven't made. Leaders have a lot <laughs> going on. And what I just, just said now isn't, you know, something that's specifically mentioned in the book, but it's kind of after afterthoughts of reading the book is that's what you get like this guy um stories is about this guy named um aiden he's a lieutenant in this you know space army or whatever and his country is under attack and he wants to be the hero and he wants to be the captain of his own ship and he's really not that likable of a guy <laughs> until you get into the story and you see him develop into a real leader and he literally makes what i call the ultimate sacrifice and i and it wasn't one of those things that I didn't necessarily see coming, although it did kind of come at me fairly quickly. I just like, kept expecting for there to be like a way out, like it wasn't going to be permanent, you know, like, yeah, he did that, but, but there was never a but. So I'm going to stop rambling about Dragon of the Star. Check it out. The next thing I read was Cast the Dawn, and that was the one um, issue in the Cast the Series that I said I hadn't read yet. So I read it and it was cute. I liked it. I can't remember if I gave it a four or five. I feel like maybe I gave it a four because it was really short. Um, most prequels aren't as long as the you know series uh, books in the series, and that's okay. Um, but I kind of felt like this one was more of um, you're a fan of the series, so you read it, so you know you're gonna like it anyway. It didn't really blow my mind, which that might be kind of um, unfair because I had just finished reading Dragon of the Stars. But yeah, it was good. Totally worth reading. Uh, the next thing I read, which I think I have over here, um, I, 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 I think I've showed you guys this before. If not, I'll put up the image. And this is the Kinder Guardians Volume 1. Um, and this is basically a graphic novel about <laughs> superhero kids. And um, it's just really cute. I haven't, um, as of this video, I hadn't rated it yet, but I'm getting ready to like rate it and rank the review and stuff. So by the time um, you actually see the video, it'll be up there. But I don't have. I'm not. I'm gonna predict that I'm gonna give it a four, but we'll see what sits, what happens when I sit down to actually write the review. The next thing I read this month was Death of a Sculptor in Hue, Shape, and Color, and that was a novella written by um, M. C. V. Egan, and. Um, I can actually say this with a little bit of pride that she and I are friends. Um, we didn't grow up together or anything like that. She's literally a, a, a I knew if you've fo been following any of this, you know there are certain authors and bloggers that I follow online and every now and then I'm lucky enough to connect with those people and she's one of them. And um, whenever she releases something, I buy it, I read it, I love it. So <laughs> it's one of those things. And um, so I saw that she had this novella coming out. I was very excited about it. And I had a bunch of stuff that I was trying to read when, when it originally came out. And because I finished early in the month of February, I was like, let me check out her thing. And of course, I enjoyed it. I'm pretty sure I gave it a four. <clears throat> but again, the correct rating will be down here in case there's something different. And it's, it's a very dramatic story. Um, I, I love, you know, chit-chatting with... Um, 
Her name's Catalina, but she publishes under the name MCV. But I love chatting with Catalina whenever possible because she's a she's an amazing person. Um, aside from just being a good author, she's a I don't know if pacifist is the right word, but she's definitely she believes that you know we should live in peace and. Um, <laughs> Knowing that about her and knowing that she writes these stories that are filled with just so much like drama and these characters that are like a hot mess and stuff, it just, it um it tickles me whenever I read her stuff because she writes about characters that are, are like her in a lot of ways, but then are totally not like her and so many others. The next thing I read was another children's book and it was, what if everyone did that? That one was cute. Again, off the top of my head, I can't remember if I gave that one a three or a four. Um, again, I love the illustrations of the book, but kind of the same thing with the other one. Um, the message that it was that it was um, giving was clear to me as an adult, but being the educator that I am and working with small children, I'm not sure. I guess it all depends on how you're reading it. I had a digital copy of it, and I really do feel like that hindered me. Like, if I had gotten the paperback copy, it probably would have been quite different. But regardless, it was a lovely children's story, and so check out my review. Now, what I'm currently reading, I'm currently reading The Sidekick Chronicles by Stacey Rourke, and I mentioned this before, that I wanted to read those. And when I went to try and go read them, found out they are no longer available. Apparently, depending upon which editions of some of her previous publications in her Griffin series that you have, they were included at the back of the book. Well, I went through all of my editions and I didn't have them and I was so bummed. I'm like, so they're not in the back of the books anymore. They're not available to purchase anymore. Like you can't get a copy of it. So what do I do? And I guess it pays to be a fan because I am a member of the Stacey Rourke's fan club. She was wonderful enough to um, gift me some copies so that I could read it and I'm enjoying them and probably going to finish today or tomorrow because I'm doing a bunch of them scatterbrained and so I would be happy to review those. I'm also reading right now the next two books in the um, Mark of Nexus series. I was only going to try to read one of those this year um, and then I realized that um, there was a a 2.5 and then a 3 so I was like oh well, I'll read that one real quick but what happened was is I didn't pay attention to the covers I started reading the third book then I realized wait a second I'm missing something so I had to go back stop reading the third one I'm reading the 2.5 book I'm a mess y'all anyway and then I'm also currently reading um, my stepfather did not kill himself by Russell Nolte and this one Still kind of up in the air about them. I literally just started it today, so I've only like read like two or three pages of it, and it seems to be written in kind of a um, like a diary or a journal format. And um, I haven't been able to really pinpoint whether or not I feel like this is drama. It's definitely some drama in it, obviously from the title, but um, I'm I get a little sense of maybe there's like some snark in it to where it might be like a dark comedy type drama. Or I could be just way off and just my initial impressions are leading up to whatever is going to happen. I don't know. But that's what I'm currently reading. Um, I also have three more projected reads for the month of March. Um, I want to go ahead and Hurricane Crime, which is the first book in the Disaster Crime series by um, Chris Fay. I want to go ahead and read Outlier, the Speculative Fiction. Speculative I want to go ahead and read The Outliers of Speculative Fiction, Volume 2. I read the first one, loved it so much that I even promoted it a little bit. But I got my copy of the second one. I'm going to read that. And I'm going to try to read a little bit of nonfiction in the month of March. I'm going to act, try to read L.A. Punk Rocker uh, by Brenda Perlin and a bunch of other authors. It's an anthology, um, but it's um, based on like true accounts and stuff like that. So it's very interesting. I have a lot of books that I've read, things that I hadn't planned on it. Needless to say, I did. A, I, I feel like I read a lot in the month of February, even if some of the stuff I read was like really short and took me a matter of minutes to read. I think the reason why I'm most impressed by what I was able to read in the month of February is the fact that I actually wrote a lot in the month of February. See, as an indie author, <clears throat> when you have a full-time job, you've got your family and all that kind of stuff going on, Plus, you're trying to put in 
however many hours a day you need to get your word count and everything and then on top of that you blog like what is wrong with us regardless usually if I'm you know engrossed in reading my writing is suffering for some reason this month that didn't happen in the month of February I did a lot of reading I did a lot of writing there's a lot happening and I'm feeling pretty good so bye bye for now